Let's see, do we got time for a twofer? Two videos today. I got some high quality raw shirt. I think this is raw. Let, let's see. Yeah. Let's try let's try for another video. I need to make some small arrowheads anyway. This is gonna be a small arrowhead video. All right, let's see. My, my stash is all messed up from the last video. Hold on. My pile is not in the proper disorder. Let's see. Okay. I got the... got threads everywhere frayed ends this flaker has had it I got my material set up for my new tools I just have not got around to do it yeah all right so what is it gonna be You'll see. It's going to be thin. How's that? What's it going to be, dude? Good and thin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that old saying? Good, cheap, and pretty. Yeah. Bueno, barato y bonito. It's an old, old saying. Okay, so this seems like high quality raw for sure. Yeah, it'll it'll be a little challenging to thin this down or to put put in some flakes so I don't have the original flake scar. Yeah, it'll be a little bit challenging. Hopefully, not a lot bit challenging. First step is to get it bifaced. It's got a little bit of curvature in various directions. Yep, it is raw. I think if I were to heat treat it, this uh, cortex would change color. Yeah, pretty sure. So I don't think it's heat treated, which is good. It's good. Why is it good? Well, I don't have to worry about crazing. Like, all of a sudden, find a spot that's not good because of heat damage. That's always a concern when you heat treat. Most of the time, not to worry. But sometimes, there's a lot of worry. Yep. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm going too slow. Okay, I'll, I'll speed it up. Yeah. Some people think I go too slow.
Yeah, I tell people there's a there's a speed setting on the video so you can watch them faster. Not too many people don't know that. But some people listen. Man, I should have known about this a long time ago. I would have saved like hours off my life if I had known you can speed up videos. Yeah, dude. I'm in the same boat. I didn't know you could speed up videos until I was several years into into YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2007. I didn't know you could speed up videos. I don't know if they had it in the beginning. But if I did know in the beginning, I would have saved many hours off my life. Yeah. I would have been able to do other things. Who knows? Who knows what I could have done? If I had just sped up those videos. Yeah. No, I actually don't like listening to the videos on high speed. I like to listen to stuff that's slow. Yeah. I like the slow talk videos. I'm the opposite of most people, I guess. I don't like fast, energetic speaking. It drives me crazy. Slow. What you in a hurry for? Listening to a fast, energetic speaker is like watching someone speed down the road past me, weaving in and out of traffic and getting... I don't know where faster than they should be getting for no reason you only gain like two minutes but they increase the risk of getting into trouble many times over no you don't get into trouble speaking fast Unless you count me changing the channel on you and faster than you can say. Where the heck are you go? I left already. <laughs> I left before you could say where the heck you going. <laughs> I can leave really fast. When you start talking fast, I can leave really fast. Yep. And the more energy you got, the more energy I push that change the channel button. Yeah. Is that true? You're th saying to yourself, is that true? That is definitely true. There's only certain people that I can tolerate speaking really fast. Yeah. Nice. I like when I can clean, do the cleaning flakes. That's the new vocabulary word for the month. Cleaning flakes. Clean off that surface. All right, so I can't goof around too much. Phase one is over. It's pretty much bifaced. Pretty much, not really, but now it's the refinement phase. Yeah. This is where I, when I would stick it in my... Back in the day, if I was living back in the day, I'd put it in my pouch and move on to the next one and biface the next one. And then take these out later. Okay. So I can take a little break, a little mental break. Why do I mention these stages? There's a debate on whether these stages are an important thing to think about in flint napping. I think they are. So I always mention them. I think they are important. These little phases. Take a breather. Or you just, you know, you get to this point, it's a certain skill. The next stage is a different skill. Because now you got to thin down and make pretty the thin point. It's a different skill. 
some of the same skills are being used but I've got to be a lot more conscientious about the edge about the tool quality about the final design now some people don't nap that way some people nap carefully the whole way through some people nap haphazardly the whole way through I tend to compartmentalize I'm not saying you should, but I tend to do that. I don't know how many people do that. I've watched a lot of nappers. A lot of them just go right through and just nap. Just nap. They just nap. There's no divisions or there's no compartmentalization. It's just napping. I find it a little more productive to take a breather and reevaluate. Even if it's just for like 15 seconds or whatever. to be careful sometimes when I'm hitting and there's nothing coming off uh, those are the hits that cause the whole thing to snap in half I can't use any of this cortex so it's all going to come off It's a shame because it's kind of a neat color. I might have, I might preserve a little bit of it. Depends on how it goes. I'm gonna make this a little more narrow. We'll see. I'm not going to thin it down too much. Uh, I've got to shape it first. Although I could probably thin down the middle a little bit more. I wanted to get. I want to get it more narrow first and then I can start sending in some good flakes because then I don't have to travel as far and I want a nice non-steppy surface that's thin okay so let's see do I use pressure to shape it I'll just continue with the indirect percussion. I'll just continue with the indirect percussion. And I, I am going to thin down this base a little bit more. Be careful I don't put a curve in it. Do it now while it's still strong. Because if I thin, thin down the center at all, I can't put a lot of force into thinning the base. I'll have to do it with delicate flakes, and it doesn't work as well. Yeah, so you like the big old cleaning flakes. Smooth. Supposedly. Yeah. I'm, I'm examining it a lot because it's important that I get it very, very straight for this type of point. Every point that I've seen like this is very straight from the side view. Almost perfect. Let's see. Hold on. This is the part where it gets dicey. 
more and more dicey as I go along, so I gotta make sure there's nothing bugging me. All right. I got stuff in my pocket that's bugging me. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to pressure flake in this direction first and then in the other direction. Why? I don't know. Just seems like a good idea at the time. Yeah. That's it. I gotta make sure I don't snap the point during this operation. That's why I use a, a domed pad. Because I only I only want the pad to be touching it right where I'm applying force. I don't want the pad touching the point anywhere else except where I'm applying force or somewhere that I know that's not going to be bridged. Let's see. There's a way to get this so we can see the edge better. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Change the lighting. I can zoom in now. I will be using some more indirect percussion in a bit. But I want you to see that I'm not on the edge. A lot of flit napping guides say you put the flaker there. I don't. I put it up here for this operation. Some people don't differentiate between different types of operations with the pressure flaker. They just say, put it on the edge. That's it. Edge. Edge, edge, edge. That's it. No. It's different for different operations. I'm just doing short flakes. It's mostly downward pressure. So I'm up on the surface. Pushing down. There's no inward. Flakes are going in a little bit because I guess there is a little bit of inward pressure, but not much. Yeah, there is some inward right there. We're on, I'm peeking so I can see how far they're going. Scratching backwards, dulling it, and then I did push inward. When you scratch backwards like this, you create that angle, and then you can push on that angle. But I'm still up on the surface mostly. I'm kind of on the edge, but I'm I'm on the surface also, where you create that angle on the stone. Right there. Push a little bit inward. All that work for just one flick? Oh yes. At this stage, every flake is important. So I'm on the I'm on above the edge. I'm not like this. I'm up here. See? Can you see? No? Oh well. Can't do nothing about it. Is it really, really blurry for you? I could try to do something about it, but my camera a lot of times is not cooperative. My phone camera? Let's see what it does. Is it going to do it? Sometimes it doesn't know what to do. It's doing pretty good right now. Indirect percussion to thin that down right there and it to uh, run some flakes in here 
Yeah. Yep, yep. I have to flatten it. Okay. Let's do this side first. I'll do this one. This is the worst problem first. See what dips right here? I gotta get rid of that dip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on. All right. Can't be too aggressive because it's really thin. I can't bite off. I can't try and bite off too much. All right. So I took a bunch off. Now I'm left with this mass here and this mass over here. Still got my glove on because I can easily drive one of these flakes into my finger. So regularize it in that direction. I'm going to peel off some flakes in this direction. I already pre ground everything. Maybe not good enough. It's already pre ground. I like pre grinding everything first. For those of you who are just now tuning in and never see me make an arrowhead. I do a lot of pre-grinding of the whole thing and then do a pass, a, pa a flaking pass, as I call it. And I believe there's other people that call that a pass also. Not that I care about consensus, I just wanted to let you know. What is that pass you're talking about? Free pass to the flint napping club. You guys giving out passes? You need a pass to get to a napping? Or a nap get into the flint napping community? No, the passes are the flakes. Yeah, you're giving flakes passes, you know? Letting the flakes in. <laughs> what do you mean, dude? <laughs> you know, the flaky people. <laughs> Yeah, well, flint nappers are flaky people. They create lots of flakes. Yeah, it makes them flaky. You didn't know that? <laughs> Alright. I can't joke around because with me, if I joke around and start slacking off, that's when start, that's when the ugliness raises its ugly head. Yeah. Ugliness has an ugly head. It starts raising its ugly head. And then you get a you get a bunch of ugly. Yeah. Alright, let's see. The glove gets in the way sometimes when I'm doing short flakes. Well, I thought it was. Yeah, it's a whole different feel with... Without the gloves, there's a whole different feel to this. Yep. All right, come on. I'm trying to be more gentle, but... You're giving me step fractures. It's not fair. Am I up on the surface a little bit with the indirect percussion? Yes, I am actually. I'm up on the surface a little bit. If you didn't notice. I'm not directly on the edge. Although sometimes I am directly on the edge where it's abraded well enough. If it's abraded well enough, I'll put the flaker right on the edge. But if it's not abraded well enough, I don't put it directly on the edge. I put it to where it can rest and have a good purchase. And it's, there's a, two angles to the, to the surface. There's the general concavity, and then there's that little bevel you put on the edge as you do the 
scraping it puts a little bevel and you see right on the edge it, it puts a little bevel right there all the way down when you scrape it that way it's not just for dulling it actually creates chips and flakes and that's where you hit you hit on that this is the surface of the piece and then it goes down a little bit right there that's where you put the flaker when you're doing the pressure or the indirect okay The subconscious knows this. If you've done a lot of it, if you've done a lot of napping and stuff, it kind of knows where to put the flaker. But to speed up the process, I showed you. I showed you where the flaker goes. Yeah. Everyone wants to learn this in two weeks. Yeah, because they got they got something coming up in two weeks, and they need it. They need their arrowheads now. Can you show me how to do this before I go to my hunting trip in a month? I've never flint that before, but I need some arrowheads. Oh gosh, how do I tell them? You guys tell me, how do I tell them the bad news? <laughs> it's so it's so heartbreaking to tell them. Maybe a year and two months, you'll be ready. But you can't say that because you come off as being mean. So mean, dude. Why you say that? I'm just being real, dude. Yeah. It's going to take a while. Do I tell the do I tell people that really? Only if they ask me, like, in a way that's, be honest with me, man. Tell me, is this, can I do this? Be honest. They know it's coming when they say that anyway. When they say that, they know it's coming, so they, they don't go away sad. They go, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Okay, fine. It's going to take about a year. Minimum. Kind of knew it, but I just wanted to hear it for sure. Yep. If you're good. Now, it took me three years to make something that I, that I liked. Three years to make something I liked. All the other stuff, I didn't like it. And I was doing the same thing over and over again. And getting the uh, different results slowly. And I was going to quit. So now, you know what? It's easier just to make bone points. Everything made of bone. I like making bone arrowheads. I'm going to do that. I almost totally quit and started making bone arrowheads only. But it turns out that I used flint napping as a form of meditation and contemplation. And later on as experimentation. This... Uh, and, and realizing this could actually teach me about the human brain. So I don't have to listen to the BS from people who say that they are neuroscientists. Not all of them are full of BS, but you know, I wanted to see for myself about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Because everyone kept saying, yeah, the subconscious is what's doing it, dude. Subconscious rules the, rules the world. Yeah. You don't got no, no say in it. You're just watching. That's what people would say. I got on the internet. And right away, the determinists were right there. I don't know where they came from, but they were always there. And they're right there in your face. Yeah, that's it. You're just watching. You're there for the ride, dude. You're not really participating. You're watching. Really? So everything that I'm doing, I'm not really in control of? That's right, man. 
So I started thinking about that while I was flint napping. And I was saying, at what point do I am am I not consciously aware that I'm going to take a flake off right here? At what point am I? I mean, am I always not aware of that? Do I have any say in taking that flake off there? Or can I take a flake off somewhere else right now? Can I say, no, I don't want to take it off somewhere else? Or have I already decided to take it there and no matter what I do, I'm going to take it there? Am I truly just watching the process? Or do I have a say? Consciously. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Consciously, I have a, a lot of say. There's no way I could be just watching it because there's no course correction if you're just watching. It's just a, your subconscious has to course correct. Does your subconscious understand everything? I mean, is it really understanding what's going on? If it does, then why do we need a conscious mind? Why do we need it? Is it just a window for information coming in? It's just a window? That's it? I don't think so. So I'm trying to regularize that surface, and it's not working that great. I think I can get better results here in a minute. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to thin the bumps. I'm mainly concerned with thinning the lumps on the surface and not getting too many step fractures in the process. And I'm trying not to break it. It is going to get a lot more narrow, but I wanted to flatten it out. So I, I still have some, I still have some room to make it even thinner. Yeah. Why is that important? Well, when you're new, uh, I used to have a lot of trouble with knowing how thin I can go before it becomes too thin and you know knowing how far to go and still have good returns and not get diminishing returns so it's still thick enough that I can I can send in some nice flakes but it's not so thick that I had to hit it really really hard right and it's you know it's that kind of thing. Hitting it really, really hard when it's thin in some areas is not a good thing. I am going to have to thin this down here. Uh, so I'm going to do that next. I think the thickest part of these points is right in the middle and not down here. I have a habit of making it thickest down here. I think the thickest is up here in the middle on these particular type of points. All right. If I remember the diagram or the photograph, the, the photograph. So just downward pressure.
on the surface. They shouldn't be creating any step fractures on the back side, so I'm not checking every flake because it's just downward pressure. When you do inward, that's when you start getting dicey. That's where our step fractures go. I can't go crazy thinning or making the tip narrow. narrow. I can't go too crazy with it. You'll see why in a little bit. I think it might still be too wide. Let me think here. Let's see. Remember the last time I made one of these, it was hard to get the proportions right at this stage. How I remember that, I don't know. It's amazing. Sometimes I have a good memory for some things and other times my memory is bad, really bad. just short flakes right now so I don't have to build up the edge by grinding or rating it's just short downward downward pop outs and I do need to thin down these barbs so I'll do that now okay this is the this gets dicey very quick, but I have a lot of good edges. So I'm going to try to keep the middle fairly thick, not too thick because I got to put notches in it. All right. Lamp leg is getting in my way. In my way. Mm. 
make sure I don't have any stone embedded in the tip. It's always good to use the abrader for this and not the file, just in case. Yeah, makes the file last a lot longer. So when you really need it, you got it. Nothing worse than when you need a tool, it doesn't work. Okay. I know you're raw stone, but don't make me don't make me use too much force. Hit the same spot over and over and over. It's not good. One of the rules of flint napping is don't hit the same spot over and over too much. Why? Because it, it will crush. It'll get very crushy. I tried to pre-abrade it, but I didn't abrade it enough, apparently. Yeah. There you go. That's the kind of flake I like. Not too big, not too small. Just enough to get it all. And that's the way it goes. That's the way it should go. That's a barb hunter. It's on the edge of being a little bit too narrow now. shape that a little bit it's a little too narrow I'm gonna take that off take this little edge off <laughs> yeah in a little bit All right. Can be hit more than once in the same spot. There it is. It's getting a little crunchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it won't be as thin as I want, but it's better to have it in one piece thick and in one piece then not have it at all I think it's good enough. yeah I'm just gonna go with that I think it's good enough Is that like fingers on a chalkboard for some of you? Yes? <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get from wearing them fancy headphones. There is rock chipping going on, but this is not supposed to be a nature sounds video. It's not supposed to be. The birds are already going to sleep. I was reviewing my last video and those birds are making a big ruckus. 
Yeah. They're very excited today. I don't know why. I got a copper spatula tool. I'm just thinking about that right now. I replaced my steel nail with a copper nail. I'm going to be using this for this particular point. Hopefully, it'll work well. If it doesn't, we're in big trouble because I don't have another little teeny flaker. This is this is when I start driving in a little bit of a little bit of these long distance flakes. Oh, we'll wait on that one. Yeah, we won't get ahead of ourselves. I'm still focusing on the stem here. I can see where some of the symmetry needs to be corrected, but that'll allow me to send in another flake to make it a little bit thinner for the notching. Close. That almost went all the way across. I don't want that right now, that's for sure. There's only one remnant from the original flake scar, I think. That's that one right there. Okay. I think that's it for surface preparation. Yeah, I don't want to risk doing, trying to do any, much, any more thinning.
the symmetry doesn't need to be perfect but the more perfect I can get it at this stage I think the better off I'll be yeah okay all right I think that's good next stage fancy edges all right here we go stretch a little bit Start slow. Yeah. Cover grabs the edge nicely. All right. Yeah, it's just a very delicate crunch and munch. That's it. Nothing special. Just very careful, very delicate with a very narrow tool. And if it starts to burr, you gotta remove that burr. It was already starting to develop a burr on there. I think that's good. I'm going to do one side first and then copy it on the other side. Okay. Alright, let's see. Put the notch here. 
or expand this one and put it in there. I think it'd be better one more. Yeah. Start it higher. It's, uh, yeah. I do need to make the middle a little narrower. I think I do make need to make the middle a little narrower. Okay, here we go. Make sure I give myself adequate space between the notches and between the serrations here and the notch here. Because I'll be applying a lot of force into this main notch. I don't want to blow away that serration over there on that side. Terminate with nice pop outs. I can probably go a little bit deeper. But we'll see. Okay.
can't go too fast on these because if I do, I might mess them up. The temptation is to go really fast now that I know what to do. But I gotta take it slow. Probably not going to be the same number of serrations. I missed that first. I messed up that first serration. So now, uh, so now, I got to make sure I don't mess up the other ones. Very delicate crunch and munch. Very delicate. There's probably too many serrations on that side, but oh well. And uh, the notches might be a little bit high up on the up on the body of the point, but it's all right. There's a definite danger of snapping the. Uh, there's a definite danger of snapping the barb off. And it's going to get worse because I need to deepen that middle notch. Good enough. I want it to be a nice clean pop out. It's got a little wave in the middle. So dip in the middle there, but it's alright. Yeah, I want to terminate with nice pop outs in that. Okay, so here we go. Get a burr on it. What that burr does, it makes it wider, so it's harder to push off a flake in that confined space. There we go.
I'm trying to remember. I forget how this termination looks like. Or how far those serrations go up. But anyway. Thinking maybe those the last two don't need to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm spending 20 minutes making it look like I did it in five minutes. All right, so here we go. Let's see. Let's finish this up. Yeah, I'm really focusing in on this because any little mishap could make it look all wrong.
just a little bit more we're almost there Okay, yeah, I think the tip is pointy enough. Yep, okay. All right, I had to get in the zone there toward the end. I didn't want to break that tip off. I think a little bit of the tip came off at one point. And uh, maybe those notches should be a little bit lower. I'm trying to think. Although some of these had long barbs, so I think that was okay. Yeah. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably put those notches those main notches one one set lower yeah so they're a little thick on the barbs but overall I think it's all right yeah I don't have any major step fractures anywhere yeah that's the only thing I would change I would drop the barbs down lower the main barbs but there you go. That's it.